Hello wonderful people! Today we are going to be animating a sneaky little cat pushing an object off a shelf. Now this exact illustration is from a previous drawing tutorial that I just posted, so if you haven't seen it already I highly recommend you go and check it out. Otherwise you could totally just follow the steps from this video with your own original illustration. We're just going to need to set up the layers first, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And all you need to follow along this video is any kind of software that allows you to work animations frame by frame. So I'm personally going to be using Procreate, but there's a bunch of other options out there. So grab your animation tools and let's get started. Before we start with the animation, let's just do a super quick recap of the layer organization we have in our file, as well as talking about something super important, especially if you're using Procreate, the Canva size. So the first consideration here, before we can even start thinking about animation, if you are working at Procreate, is making sure we have at least 60 layers available within our canvas. The way to look at that is very easy. You can just go in the wrench icon menu here at the very top of your menu, picking the canvas submenu, and then in the canvas submenu, you can go at the very bottom and pick canvas information. Now from here, you can go ahead and look at layers and just look at what the maximum layers option here at the top says. For this animation here, make sure you have at least 60 layers available. So in my case, I have 163 again, that's totally okay. Now, if you do not have 60 layers available currently, it is not the problem. I'm going to show you how you could go ahead and get more layers in your file. Essentially, the way Procreate works, it's kind of annoying, but it's giving you layers based on how big or small your file is, as well as which kind of iPad you're using. So it really depends on a whole lot of factors. I cannot give you just a dimension that is going to be a one size fits all. But you could easily find what works for you by sticking in the wrench icon menu, canvas sub menu, but this time picking the crop and resize option. And just opening the settings right here, making sure that you activate this little lock icon here so that you keep the same dimensions of your piece, as well as activating the resample canvas here so that instead of cropping in the piece when you change the settings, it just resizes the whole thing. So the idea here is just going to be going through different dimensions. For example, I had 250 by 250, which worked for me, but might not for you. Let's say I go with 2000 and looking at whatever layer option available pops up at the screen. It's kind of fast, so we might have missed it. But just going through different dimensions until you see at least 60 layers here at the top. That being said, again, my 2500 by 2500 was totally fine. So I'm just going to go back to, whoops. <laughs> so I'm just going to reset my settings and stick to what I had. Now, once you know you can have 60 layers in your file, we're just going to reorganize our layers so that we can then start animating them. Should be pretty simple. Again, if you're working with a different illustration, that is totally okay. Just make sure you try and do your best to follow the same structure for your layers as we have here in this piece. And that structure is going to start with just a group for everything that is going to be in the background and is not going to move. So in our case here, we have this cat silhouette, which is not going to move the vases on the left that are not going to move either, as well as the shelf. So we're going to select all those layers, again, that are not moving in the background. In Procreate, you can select multiple layers by swiping them towards the right with one finger. And we are going to group them. Now, once you have the group, you can collapse it just so the layer list is a little bit better organized. And you can also rename that new group to background. And similarly to what we did by grouping all the layers that are not going to move in just one group that we renamed to background, we're also going to group all the layers that are going to move in one group that we're going to rename to animation. So in my case here, I have the eye layer that I'm going to move around, the paw that I'm going to extend and then bring back in the body, and the potted plant that I'm going to have fall forward. So just grouping all of those together in one big group. And again, just renaming that group to animation. Now, why are we doing that? I'm going to tell you in a second, but before I can tell you, we're going to go ahead and pull up our animation menu. So if you're working with Procreate, the animation menu is called Animation Assist, and it is super basic, but it works super, super well. And you can find that menu by opening up the wrench icon here at the top, or the wrench icon menu at the top. And in the canvas submenu, you can activate the animation assist toggle right here. 
Now, once you activate that, it is going to probably just mess up the way your illustration looks. Don't worry about it for now. It didn't break anything. It's just that it is opening up the menu, which you can see here now on the bottom. And it is taking every group that we have and turning them into frames. Now, if you're not familiar with frames, think of it as the pages of a flip book. So the way to create animations in Procreate or in a different frame by frame software, frame by frame animation software, is to either use layers or groups to create these individual pages of the flipbook and creating slight variation of the base illustration between the group, the layers, or the frame, depending on how you want to call them, and then playing those in a sequence, just like you would flip a flipbook, to create that illusion of movement. Because the tiny little differences between the illustration do compound and create that animation. So by activating Animation Assist, we have opened up that menu, but also now Procreate is considering different groups as different frames. But right now, if we tap play, it's just going to alternate between the two groups that we have, which is definitely not the animation that we want. And so we need to tell Procreate, hey, this is the background and it should remain still throughout the whole animation. The way to do that is super simple. We're just going to go in the animation menu, locating which frame is the background. It should be the one on the left tapping on it and activating the background toggle right here. Now, if you do not see a background toggle there, it is because you have something between your background color layer and your background layer or background group. So make sure you don't have anything there, otherwise it's just not going to work. And if we did it right now, if we press play, nothing is happening. Now creating the animation itself is going to be very easy because we don't really have to draw anything new. We just have to move the layers we have around and just reposition everything to create the movement. And we're just going to start by moving the pupil around in the eyeballs to make it look like the cat is looking to see if someone is looking at him before he can push the plant. Which means at this stage we should not see the paw just yet. So you can go ahead, open up your animation group and hide the paw layer. Make sure you do not delete it, we do need it later, but we just don't want to see it yet. So to create the movement, again, like I mentioned, we're going to have to move the different elements, but if we just go ahead and move them, Procreate is not going to record that. So we need to create different frames, and to create different frames, we're just going to create copies of this animation group. So we're going to duplicate the group, and to do that, super simple, you can just swipe the group towards the left with one finger, and tap on duplicate. Now, whenever we duplicate a group, we always want to make sure that we select the top copy and create the changes there to make sure the animation flows in the right direction. So again, we're just going to start by moving the eyes, first pushing it towards the very right edge of the eyeball. So you can just open up your top animation group, select the eyes layer, and using the arrow tool to move the eyes towards the right. So now if we go ahead and press play, we should see the eyes move from the middle to the right and just alternating between those two states. So we're gonna repeat the same step, but this time moving the eyes towards the left. So you can just go back, maybe collapse the top group, duplicate it, make sure you have the top copy selected, picking the eyes, and this time just moving them towards the very left. Now, once the cat is done looking on their sides to make sure no one is looking at him, it's going to go back to looking at the plant or whatever object it's going to push off the shelf. So same thing, we're just going to create a copy of our top group to create a new frame. And then we're going to move the eye layer, but this time towards whatever object. So in my case, towards the bottom right. And from now, everything goes super quickly. We're just going to focus on moving all the elements, creating the entire animation, and then we're going to come back and then we're just going to play with the speed of the animation to add comedic value, as well as just making the movement a little bit more fluid. But again, for now, we're just going to focus on creating the different frames. So once the cat is looking down at the plant, it's going to start extending its paw to kick off whatever object is in front of him or her. <laughs> So once more, we can just duplicate our top group. And then this time we're going to reactivate the paw layer. But we're going to start by having the paw layer really close to the body. So you can use your arrow tool here. And to make sure the paw always moves on the same angle or the same 
track, I guess. We're going to activate both snapping options just to make it way easier on ourselves. So you can do that by selecting the snapping option right here and activating both magnetic and snapping. And from there, very easy, we're just going to slide the paw until it barely pokes out of the body. So if we go ahead and click play right now, we're going to see the eyes are going to move and then we're going to start seeing the paw come out. So we're just going to repeat that until the paw is fully extended. So duplicating the top group, picking the paw layer and then moving it outwards a little bit more every time. So you probably want to do that movement three, four, five times, meaning you're just going to incrementally move the paw three or five times, but always using the same technique. So two in my case, I'm going to repeat it again, duplicating my top copy, picking the paw layer and moving it a little bit more outwards. I'm at three now, probably just doing it one more time. That should do it. So if you go ahead and check the animation by pressing play, there we go. Now the paw is fully extending towards the object. Now to make it extra sneaky, we're going to, before the cat actually pushes the object off the edge, we're going to make it look, you know, backwards kind of above its own shoulder, really like it's not, you know, it's not seeing what's happening. So once more, just go ahead and duplicate whatever top group you have, keeping the paw as it is, but this time moving the eyes back to the top left. And for that, feel free to deactivate the snapping options if you find it a little bit easier. Okay, so at this point, our cat looks absolutely insane, but we're ready to start moving the pot. So you know it, we're just going to create a copy of our top group, very easy. We're not going to move the eyes, but we're going to move both the potted plant and the paw or whatever object you have in the paw. And to make it look like the potted plant is coming towards us, so towards the edge of the shelf, we're going to make it slightly bigger. So selecting your potted plant layer, using the arrow tool or whatever other tool you have to resize a layer, we're going to make that layer a little bit bigger by stretching it towards the bottom. And super important here, make sure that you are keeping the proportions so you don't want to distort the shape, you really want to keep it uniform. And I definitely should have mentioned that earlier, but better late than never, I guess. If you are working in Procreate, there is a thing called Onion Skin Frame that allows you to see the other layers around the ones you're working on. So for example, here, currently my eyes or the eyes of the cat are towards the top left, but I still see a very pale version of when the eyes were looking at the plant. And that is because I have, yes, Onion Skin Frame. Now, Onion Skin Frame doesn't affect the final result of the animation, but it can help you move your layers around because you can see what was right before and right after in the animation sequence. Now, usually Onion Skin Frame should already be activated, but if it is not for some reason, or if you want to tweak the settings, you can just go in your animation menu here at the bottom, opening up the settings, and setting this Onion Skin Frame slider here to something like two or three. Honestly, here, that's your personal preference. And same thing with the opacity, that's totally up to you. It depends on how dark or how intense you want the previous and future layers to be. So I like to keep mine quite pale because otherwise I find them too distracting. So usually something around 40, 50% is what I'm going for. That being said, going back to the animation, if we click play, now we should see the plant starts to come forward a little bit, but we're going to need to move the paw as well because otherwise it just looks like the cat is extending its paw and then, you know, not touching the plant and the plant just falls. So that's not the look we're going for. So we're going to move the paw as well. So for that, just go ahead and reopen up whatever top group you had in which you moved the plant and select the paw layer. Now here we do want to distort the paw to make it look like it's coming forward. So instead of using any kind of uniform 
setting, we're going to use a distort setting. And we're just going to use the right side handles to move the paw towards the bottom of the pot. So now if we click play, we should see the pot move and the paw move. There we go. Now a little note here, make sure that when you move the paw, it still doesn't overlap with the shadow if you have a shadow, otherwise that makes no sense. So if it does overlap, just go back to whatever object you have and erase that shadow real quick. So we're just going to repeat these two steps a few times, so making the pot a little bit bigger, a little bit more forward, and moving the paw. So duplicating the top group you have, starting with the object, making it a little bit bigger, using uniform to make sure you don't change the proportions. And I say a little bit bigger, but honestly at this stage, because otherwise the animation is going to be very slow, make sure that the bottom of your object touches the edge of the shelf or whatever elements it's about to fall off. And if you do have a shadow here, make sure you come back and erase it because the shadow is not going to fall with the pot. We don't need it anymore. It would just look very, very weird. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking you to do that, but believe it or not, it is a fantastic way to help support your favorite creators because it just tells the video or tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thank you for helping. Otherwise, going back to the paw and then this time distorting it so that it reaches forward a little bit more. Now at this stage, if you bring it to the very edge, it might look a little bit too distorted, so just keep it as a bit of an in-between. You just want to move it a little bit. And if, like me, that creates any gaps, just go back in and fill those in real quick. Otherwise, once more, we're going to check our work, so we're just going to click play. Awesome! So the next phase of the animation is going to be very simple. We're just going to keep the pot the same size, but we're going to move it towards the bottom of the illustration. And then we're going to retract the paw back inside the body of the cat. So once more, just duplicate your top group. Go ahead and select your object. And back with the arrow tool, this time to make sure it falls straight, we're going to go back with any kind of snapping options we have, so magnetic and snapping and procreate here. And we're just going to start by moving the plant downwards a little tiny bit, so we don't want it to fall too much, just a little bit. And I'm noticing here I didn't do a super good job at erasing my shadows, I'm just going to come back in and clean that up a little bit. Otherwise, for the paw, we're going to do the opposite of what we did before. So we're just going to select the paw, arrow tool, still at distort, but this time probably without the snapping options because that would make it really hard to move it properly. We're just going to retract the paw in the body, moving it upwards as we go as well. So upwards and inside the body a little bit. Once more, just checking our work. Awesome. Oh, this is really starting to come together. Great. So we're just going to keep going with that movement, super easy. Making the potted plant fall just a little bit further this time. So probably middle of the way in terms of what's left in your space. Bringing the paw back inside or inwards until there's just the tiniest little bit left. And repeating once more, which should be the final time. So duplicating the top group. This time, honestly, you can just go ahead and delete the paw layer. We won't need it anymore. It should be fully retracted in the body. And I think we're going to move the potted plant once more towards the bottom before we completely delete it. So same thing, using any snapping option you have to make sure it follows the same trajectory. And here I'm really just going to keep the very tip of that plant. Now the last little few things we're going to do before playing with the timing of the animation is bringing the eyes back in the middle and maybe drawing a little bit of a sneaky smile as well.
So once more, go ahead and duplicate your top group. And you can delete whatever object layer you have. We won't need it anymore. And then selecting the eyes, you can just bring them back in the middle. Now you definitely do not have to draw a smile if you want, but I think it makes the whole thing so funny. So I'm definitely going to do it. So I'm just gonna duplicate my top group again. I know <laughs> we're almost done with that. And I'm going to create a new layer within the group that I'm going to rename to smile. Wow, I can't type. <laughs> there we go. Now the smile here, I'm gonna have it be the same color as my light gray detail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and color pick that but you could use whatever color you want. You want it to be visible, so you wanna make sure that there's enough contrast, but not too bright, because you don't wanna steal away the focus from the eyes. And we're going to draw this smile in two phases so it animates as well, starting with a very simple horizontal line between the two eyes, like this. And then we're going to create our final frame by duplicating our group once more. Going back onto the smile layer to draw the actual curvature of the smile. And here I'm just going to bring it a little bit upwards towards the left to make it super cheeky. So I don't want a full smile. I really want that cheeky, sneaky, mischievous smile. Awesome. So at this point we have all the frames, but the timing is completely off. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to play with what is called frame per second. So put your animation towards the top so we can really see it well and open up your settings menu. And the first thing we want to make sure here is that our settings or animation is set to loop so that it loops through the frame in the same order all the time. Now the next thing we're going to set is the frame per second option here. And here there's no magic number for the frame per seconds. It depends on your own animation, how many layers you created, how many frames you created, and how fast or how slow you want a general animation to look at. So go ahead and tap play here. It's going to help you visualize what we're about to do. I'm gonna reopen my settings here. And here we're just going to go and look at which part of the animation we want to be the fastest, which for this specific animation is going to be when the plant falls. And so we're going to set the frame per second so that the plant falls at the rhythm or at the pace that we want it to fall. So I think right now it's falling a little bit too slowly. So I'm going to set it to, let's say 10. Maybe 12, let's see. I'm gonna go with 10. Now a little disclaimer here, frame per second is not meant to be necessarily just the speed of the animation. There's a whole lot more that goes into it. But for this tutorial, for the purpose of a very simple animation that we're going to export through Procreate and then maybe post on social media, Essentially, that's all frame per second is doing. So if you're pro animator, don't come for me in the comments. I know frame per second is not the speed of an animation, but in this context, it kind of is. So that's great. Now we have the fastest speed we want set up, but we need to slow down some frames because right now the eyes are moving so quickly. It looks absolutely crazy. And there's no comedic pause, which is so important in an animation. Well, if you want the animation to be funny, that is. So the way to slow down parts of the animation is simply going to be adding hold on some of the frames. And you can do that by just going through the different frames. You can see here, if you just tap, it essentially goes through your flip book very, very slowly. So just going through the different frames and tapping on the frame and setting the whole duration here to whatever you want. So I'm gonna start here with the first frame we have, which is the cat just looking at us without anything else happening. Because it is the start of the animation, I want it to stay like that for a little while before everything starts moving. So I'm gonna set my hold duration here to 15, which means Procreate is going to create these little phantom copies of the frames. You cannot edit those, but it's just there to show you that in the animation menu, this original frame is going to stay there for a little bit. So just to show you what it does, if I tap play now, you can see it's staying on that initial eye position for a little while. So we're just going to polish the illustration by going through all the different frames and deciding how long we want them to stay. So again, I have my first frame staying for 15 seconds just to start the animation. 
I'm also going to slow down how the cat is looking around because I want it to look like it is actually taking the time to look around. So this frame right here where the cat is looking towards the right, I'm probably going to have it hold for a little bit less than the initial, but a little bit more than just nothing. So maybe something around seven. And same thing where it, when the eyes are looking towards the left, I'm going to set that to seven as well. And here there's really no magic number, again there's no right or wrong way to do this, so there's nothing like testing. When you set a hold duration, just tap on play and see if it works well, if it doesn't, change it as needed. It's really all about the feel of the animation. Awesome. Now the movement of the eye I feel looks much better, but I do want to add a bit of a comedic pause here when the cat is looking at the plant. I'm going to pause quite a while so that the viewer of the animation has a little bit of time to wonder, hmm, is the cat actually going to push the object of the hedge or not? So here, probably going to set my whole duration back to 15, just like I had for the first frame. That's a little bit too long, actually. It makes it feel like the animation is done, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to go back to that frame. Probably set it to 10. Now the next few frames are the one that we set the speed based on. So we shouldn't have to create any hold on them, but we're still going to check. I'm just going to go back to the start and press play. Actually, I think I'm going to change the length of the frame I just did. Again, that comic pause, I feel like it's a little bit too long still. Let's go with eight. <laughs> but otherwise, the, the speed of the paw extending and the pot falling, I think, is totally on point. So I'm going to keep it like that. Although, I'm going to experiment with a little bit of a pause before the pot starts falling. So the cat has extended its paw, but once more, we're going to have the viewer wait and see if it's actually going to push it off. So right before the pot starts to move, let's see which frame that is. This one. I'm just going to add the tiniest little hole in that. Probably the shortest of everything, around five or six. Let's see what's going to work best. There we go. Yeah, that's funny. Okay, great. So I have my pause here before the cat pushes the pot. Otherwise, the pot falling is fine. We're going to keep it like that. And the last little pause I think I'm going to add, except for the final frame, is on these eyes here before the smile appears. So I'm just going to add a little hold as well, probably five again. And before I press play to check, I'm also going to add a hold on the very final frame once more, just so the animation sticks there for a little bit before moving on to the front or the top or the start. <laughs> I can't speak anymore. So this whole duration is probably going to be the same length as the initial one, just again, because we want the viewer to have time to see, okay, the cat is smiling, it's really proud of himself. So let's go with 15, but once more, we're gonna check it out and adjust it as needed. So going back to the front, let's start <laughs> tapping play. And actually, I think the last little thing I'm going to change, my smile is too small, it's too pale, we can't see it really well. So I'm just going to go back and make it a little bit thicker. So just reopening both of the top groups that we have and thickening both of those lines. Oh yeah, that's much better. And once you're happy with your animation, you can easily save it just like a normal video by going in the wrench icon menu here at the top, selecting the share option, and going in the bottom section here, which is called share layers. I know it sounds weird, but that's how we can share or save a video. 
And here you have a few different options depending on what your goal is or what you intend to do with the video. I think animated MP4 is probably the most versatile, so that's what I'm going to pick. And here, make sure the frame per second is the same one you had in your settings, otherwise your pace is going to be all messed up. We don't want that because we worked on it. So 10, that's what I had, all good. And from there, you can just tap on export. Might take a few seconds. And then once the export is complete, you're going to have a few options on where to save your animation if you are working on your iPad. I like to just select saved video here because it's going to save the animation just like a regular video, meaning it's going to be with all your other videos in your iPad's camera roll. So from there, it's just really easy to either share it on Instagram, Facebook, because it's really just a regular video from now on. If you enjoyed this video and want more animation tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you, some easier ones and some slightly more complicated ones, so there's something for everyone. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.